last day without me. This should be day five. I'll see you tomorrow. I'll be back to talk to you guys about how you're liking your books. Um, the skill that you're working on today while I'm not here is what to do when you encounter an unfamiliar word when you're reading. Some of you guys have big vocabularies. It's never going to happen to you. Lies. Happens to me all the time. Okay? We need to know what to do when we come across those words. So, the first step would be to reread the sentence it's in. And then the second step is go back and reread the whole paragraph. You want to know what's going on around that word to see if you can pick up, number three, context clues. If you can find anything in the sentence or paragraph that's going to help tip you off what that author means with this word. When you've picked up some clues, you're going to come up with an educated guess. Well, it sounds like the word might mean this. Then, last step is to plug it back in. If it makes sense, you've got a good guess you can go with. If it doesn't make sense, go back. Look for more clues. See if you can figure something else out for that word. For example, I could say, Susie's mother taught her to never let anyone degrade her. So now she demands respect in all of her relationships. Well, this word here, degrade, I don't know if I know what that means. So let me look for some context clues. Go back and reread this. Susie's mother taught her to never let anyone degrade her. Okay, well, her mother does not want her to be degraded, so that's probably a bad thing, I would think. So now she demands respect in all of her relationships. Okay, so now she's doing that. Maybe she wasn't doing it before, so she wasn't getting respect. So maybe a bad thing, you're not getting respect. It could be about disrespect. Let's plug that in and see if it makes sense. Susie's mother taught her to never let anyone disrespect her, so now she demands respect in all of her relationships. That makes sense. That fits in the sentence. I figured out what degrade means. Let's try it again. If we use the red napkins, my mom will be happy, but my dad will be discontent. Okay? So discontent is a word I have to figure out what that means. Let me go back and reread, looking for context clues. If we use the red napkins, my mom will be happy, but my dad will be discontent. So but means that they are not going to feel the same way. Mom will be happy, but dad's going to feel some other way. So opposite of happy, I don't know, angry, upset, frustrated. Let's plug that in and see if that fits for this sentence. If we use the red napkins, my mom will be happy, but my dad will be upset and angry. Sure, that seems like it would fit in that sentence. So now I figured out what discontent means. One more like this. The dogs were so hungry that they would have killed one another for a morsel of meat. Ellison Roman would never do this. He's very kind and gentle. But some dogs might. So I have to figure out what the word morsel means here in this sentence. They're so hungry, they would have killed them for a morsel of meat. Well, they're really, really, really hungry. I know that. Um, a morsel of meat. Well, I mean, if they had a big pile of meat, maybe they could just share it. Maybe they would just each have a piece of it. If they have less meat, they might not be able to. They really would fight to the death to get this because they're so hungry. So I think maybe a morsel is like a, a, a small amount or a scrap. Let's see if that fits. The dogs are so hungry that they would have killed one another for a scrap of meat. Yeah, that makes sense. So this is what you should be doing when you hit words that are not familiar to you in your text. You'll also see this in multiple choice form. My mom always worries about my grades and the colleges that I'll be able to attend, but if she were a little less fretful, she'd be a lot more fun. So I'm trying to figure out what fretful means, a word that would not change the meaning of the sentence, but I could stick in there instead. Now, I don't have to go through and make guesses because I've been given guesses. I just need to see which one fits, okay? If she were a little less cheerful, she'd be more fun? Probably not. If you're cheerful, you're pretty fun anyway, I think. <laughs> um, be anxious. If she were a little less anxious, she'd be more fun, okay? That could fit. Um, I also see that she worries about my grades, so being worried and anxious kind of go together. I think that's a pretty good option, but I'm going to keep looking. C, excited. Um, if she were more excited, she'd be a lot more. I don't know about that one either because excitement generally is supposed to be fun and upbeat and happy. Let's try our last one. D, angry. If she were a little less angry, she'd be a lot more fun. Okay, that could fit too. You're not going to be that fun if you're angry. But I don't have any clues up here about her being angry. They don't say that she's mad at her because of her grades. They just say that she's worried about her because of her grades. So I still think that anxious fits the best because anxious and worried go together. So that's what you're going to be doing today. On the front of your reader sheet, just like always, you've picked those three unfamiliar words and you figured out what you think they mean. But now you've got to take it a step further. You're going to pick two of those words and you are going to 
um, make multiple choice questions out of them. You're going to write the question up here, the sentence that you found the word in, and then you're going to give four options for what it could mean, just like this example I gave up here. I want to come back and be able to test myself on your multiple choice questions. If you have time, you could even test one of your classmates. I'm so excited that you guys have been working on these, and I will see you tomorrow.